I will make the motion to approve those sets of minutes. Would there be a second? I guess for expediency's yeah. sake, I can second them. Sure, sure. And uh, yeah. Sorry, Steve. Mark I was going to. There we go. So, now I can second it. it. All right. My computer's having a little trouble today. Okay. Mark's back in the game. Okay. It's, it's been properly moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the uh, the September 17th and 22nd election board. And I uh, would ask for any uh, any further discussion. Seeing none. Any additions or corrections? Seeing none. If, the, if not, all in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. All right. So we move ahead to uh, new business. Uh, Michael, I'm going to turn it over to you for the revision to ballot collection and, re uh, and return plan. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, as we all know, back on September 17th, we took action uh, to approve our plan and for the ballot, essentially the ballot drop boxes. Uh, in the guidance given out by the Department of State, if we ever need to amend it and put a supplemental plan in, we can do that. And essentially, we would just approve it as we had done prior and submit it to them. Uh, and uh, we made some updates to the plan to reflect some of the things that have happened recently. Uh, there are five big ones. Essentially, we amended the plan to put more information in about the satellite election office and the work that's being done there. Uh, we also made an a, 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 a edit uh, for the vehicle that we'd be using uh, from a from the uh, Dodge Caravan to the Chrysler Voyager. Uh, we also put in the the dates and times of the drop boxes. Uh, we are in we are actually going to be receiving the drop boxes today, and uh, we are going to be having them decaled uh, from Able Signs. Able Signs is going to be coming up to do the decaling. Um, and uh, that'll happen today. Uh, they will then begin to be installed Friday, so tomorrow, and also Monday. And the way that we are, we would be, uh, if anybody would ask, when can I use the drop boxes, we're giving a few days of cushion, and so it would be no later than Wednesday the 7th, drop, those drop boxes would be available. So by basically Monday night, we would have seven drop boxes open, uh, and available, uh, there would be six of them would be 24/7 and outside. The only one that is not is the one that's at the Center Hall MDJ office that is located inside. It's accessible Monday through Friday, uh, 8:30 to 5 o'clock. Uh, the the hub drop box we are still working on that, and in the plan we're, we are reflecting that as uh, uh, no later than Monday the 19th of October. The drop box would be in, would be operational. Uh, so, so again, we just we're outlining the time for that now that we have have a little bit of certainty. Uh, we do update the section on plan readiness, and we just talk about the fact that we had approved the plan on the 18th, or I'm sorry, the 17th, and that, uh, so we just updated that. And then we also have in the, uh, the the back end section of the plan, we actually have some of the images of the decals. The drop box we had for the primary, we just had. You know, Dropbox on it. There wasn't really anything identifiable, uh, but the images of the decals, as you can see from the plan, uh, will have uh, the a lot of essentially the 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 uh, misdemeanor code. If anybody would tamper it with it, the fact that third party return of a ballot is prohibited. If there's any issues, uh, they they can call the 1-800 uh, a non-emergency uh, 911 number. Uh, they can call the uh, local police department. They can also call the district attorney's office. Uh, and then if it is an emergency, they can call 911. Uh, but essentially, those have been uh, created, and so we put them in. So essentially, all, all that we would be doing is just making making basically an, an update to the plan and sending that to the Bureau of Election Safety uh, Technology. Uh, so essentially, that's all, that's all we're doing at this point. And, and I guess I could also mention that we had uh, – we had a training, I guess, or a walkthrough of the drop boxes with the three individuals that would be doing the, the transportation aspect of it, of picking them up. Um, we also had, um, seemed like almost almost half of the sheriff's office came out, uh, which was great, but the sheriff is going to be utilizing a number of different people uh, on a daily basis to do these runs. 
And so uh, we essentially just walked through for about 90 minutes the process of doing the drop box. Um, both the sheriff's office and the individuals that would be doing the pickup had some good feedback. So what we also did was we amended the plan. And again, that's um, why it went out so late is I was doing some amendments to the plan last night in the, in the uh, form section. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're actually going to be doing an additional uh, security seal. And that security seal is we're going to padlock the bag. We're going to cinch it up with a metal cinch. We're going to padlock it. But then in addition to that, we're going to be putting a steel metal um, security seal in the, winch, in, the, in the cinch that will essentially tighten it. And so even if there was padlock access, there's at least a security seal that can verify that would be verified, the number would be recorded uh, before they leave the site and it would be verified when they get back to the Willowbank building. So it's just an additional step in, in, in that place. Uh, we also, from the elections office standpoint, on the form that's gonna be coming back to the Willowbank building, it was important to notate uh, the ballots returned that are correctly in the return envelope. It was important to notate if, and we had we did have this in the primary where ballots Ballots were returned naked. So forget naked ballot in the vote by mail processing room. The ballot was naked when it went into the drop box. Some people just put their ballot in the drop box, just, you know, voted. <laughs> so that is what that is. And then uh, in the middle road then was that there were some ballots that were in a secrecy envelope that were put into the drop box. So instead of just having the, uh, the transportation team and the elections office count the ballots in general, the elections office suggested having the three categories. We hope that it's it's zero and zero for the secrecy envelope ballot and the just pure ballot without anything or uh, without any envelope. Uh, but again, we wanted to notate that so we would have a record of receiving any of those. So those are, those are some of the highlights of what happened with the plan. So I'm happy to again, answer any questions that anybody might have on it. Uh, and then my hope would be that we could take a take approval of, uh, of that so that we could submit that to the, uh, the Department of State. Okay, uh, Mark. Any questions for for Mike on this issue? No, it it seems uh, very thorough, um, <clears throat> quite detailed, um, and uh, Mike's always just making it a little uh, a little better every time we talk. Thanks, Mike. All right. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the revisions to the ballot collection and return plan? I will make that motion. I'll second the motion. Okay, properly moved and second. Any uh, further discussion? Just, just, just again. No, oh, no, go please ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry, Commissioner. I just want to note for the record, although I had, uh, I, I still continue to have uh, reservations on the, uh, on the ballot uh, drop box program. I'm going to support this because I think it's important that we, uh, that we move forward and uh, do this effectively. Uh, since we are just a few, literally a little over a month away from election day, so. Thank you, Steve. I, I uh, Commissioner Gershom, I, really, I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate you saying that. Um, uh, means a lot for, for you to have uh, the support of this. And again, I think the role that you can play is to keep us honest, keep us on point. And uh, if you see anything that we can improve, let us know. But I, I uh, uh, humbly thank you for uh, saying that and uh, uh, your support. Thank you. Well, I just think it's incredibly important that uh, that uh, as we move toward this uh, toward election day, that we uh, we're all singing from the same hymnal because I think it's very important for our uh, for, uh, uh, constituents to understand and the voters to understand how important we're taking this. So, anyway, that being said. Uh, any other discussion? No. No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We uh, we, we move forward to old business. Uh, we have uh, who wants to handle the uh, the ballot printing update? Sure. So t uh, I'll touch on it briefly, but Tisha is going to give us a, a good timeline of what we're looking at. Uh, so going back with uh, Midwest, our vendor for the printing uh, with the Department of State and the voter database, Shore, um, uh, the thing that we've been talking about since we started this was let's make sure that we make this work and we do it right. It's, uh, it's the largest amount of ballots we we're, we're have, have sent out in one fell swoop, so let's make sure it's right. 
And so we just want to, uh, we're, we're doing a, I would say a triple check to make sure that everything is, is good to go. We still have some questions left for sure to make sure that uh, the list that we've exported is, is workable. And so, um, so we're just doing our due diligence. I think it's very important to do this well. We have the time. We got the ballot certified prior to when we thought we were going to have it certified. Uh, so uh, I want to commend Tisha for taking the extra steps to make sure that we, we do this right uh, on, this, on this first go around, this first batch. Uh, but she can talk a little bit about what the timeline, timeline would look like um, as of today, tomorrow, and going into early next week. Um, so we are working very diligently with our shore team to get the files in order and our projected timeline is to be able to pull our file tomorrow and be able to then confirm the file data from our mailhouse and they hopefully will start printing and packaging Friday. Wonderful. So that we have we we basically are uh, ready to go to print. Uh, with yes, with our final confirmation of our file submission and extraction, yes. Good. Well, that's that's uh, that's fantastic news. Uh, any comments from the board in regard to uh, the ballot? If not, not really. Just thanks for a great job. Yeah, and I, I think, think getting it done. And I think it's worth noting from Jody's standpoint, the testing that happened. Uh, it would be great, Jody, if you could just give a little bit of a synopsis on what that testing looked like. Um, sounds like it was clean, no issues, but I think it's good for the record just to mention that. Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, as for coding the election, testing the ballots, initially I print a test deck in-house just to ensure that what I have programmed is true and correct and accurate. I also then received a test deck from Midwest so that mm. I can test their print and their ballot stock. Um, both test decks have worked magnificently. I had no issues with the stock or print of the ballots from Midwest, so everything thus far has worked as it is intended to. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, well, that being all said, we're all good then. Uh, then I guess there's discussion about the, uh, the satellite uh, election office. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, one of the things that uh, we had, had put in the plan um, and, and discussed about for the um, ballot return plan and uh, previously in, in Board of Elections meeting was the Satellite Elections Office. And so I want to just list some of the, the priorities we had up there and how things are going. So uh, the, the first main one is the security aspect from the shore system and getting connectivity through Penn State's network. Um, there's going to be another, we have a, a basically been able to work out with the university a, another line that we can use up there, another another uh, uh, internet line uh, to get connectivity. And so that's been able to streamline the process. In addition, we are gonna be receiving uh, tomorrow uh, the additional units that we need to have up there to be able to connect to the shore system. Uh, the Bryce Jordan Center has been great with us essentially using all of the peripherals, uh, camera, mouse, uh, 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 keyboard, all of that, that currently resides at the ticket window. So we're essentially just going to plug and play the devices we're getting from the state. Um, we had delivered yesterday. It looks really magnificent. It's currently in the lobby of the elections and tax uh, tax collection side. It's the, uh, the ballot uh, storage unit that we ordered last week, and it looks really nice. Remodelers work Workshop did a fantastic job on it. It's um so it's back in the back, but it's sort of the big big brother now of the the ballot uh, uh, storage device we have in the in the in the elections office. Uh, so that's going to be going up to the to the elect to the Bryce Jordan Center once we receive the uh, in-house ballots that Jody mentioned from William Penn. We're going to be uh, taking some up uh, in a secure fashion uh, uh, next week. Uh, we, as we know from the board of commissioners and the board of salary board meeting. We have hired uh, a considerable amount of people for the positions. Uh, Samantha Reese 
uh, from, from the HR office who's been working in the elections office will basically be the coordinator up at the Bryce Jordan Center. And um, I'll be helping her out as time permits. Uh, but Samantha has entered into the Shore system thousands, over a thousand of these forms for uh, mail-in and absentee. And so she'll be an excellent uh, you know, troubleshooter uh, and uh, individual up there uh, to be working through with all the staff. Um, we are going to be doing a local training with Samantha and Tisha uh, for all of the workers up there in terms of them processing the, the applications. Uh, and uh, that's going to be scheduled, uh, we think, uh, 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 next week to get things up and running with that. Uh, but everything is smooth sailing at this point. Uh, we are going to be going up on Tuesday, myself and Samantha, to make sure that everything is everything is working in terms of uh, the shore system, in terms of the Bryce Jordan Center, having f any final questions. Uh, but uh, everything is a go. Uh, to, it's, it's moving forward well. And uh, we're interested to see what kind of utilization we'll have of the uh, of the, sa uh, the satellite election office. We, we think it's going to be positive, but, uh, you know, we won't know until we get up there. So uh, as of right now, the, the, the first day that we would be accepting over-the-counter applications would be Wednesday, uh, October 7th. Uh, we will get the staff there, the team there will get there at 9 a.m. We will not open the doors until noon. Uh, we will then close the doors at noon or at four o'clock or anybody who's in line at four o'clock. Uh, uh, we would permit them to vote or, or to come in to get their over-the-counter ballot, and then we would close things up. But the focus on Wednesday is going to make sure we do it right. So we're going to get everybody there three hours early, do any my final prep, um, you know, just go through the system once again, and then we're going to open it up at noon. So I think that we've been mindful about doing this right, doing it accurately, doing it safely. Uh, and it's been a team effort. And so, again, we're looking forward to seeing how all, it all works. So happy to answer any questions uh, about that in regards to um, uh, any, any questions people would have. Michael, I would, I would appreciate if uh, you would let me know uh, when you and Samantha are going up on Tuesday. I'd like to uh, go with you or at least meet you there. And uh, I'd like to see the, the whole setup and you know, get a feel for what what uh, what we're looking at there. So that'd be great. Absolutely, absolutely. I I will if you you're uh, if you're over in your office, I'll just I'll let you know after the meeting's over happily. And Mark as well. Mark yeah, Mark Margaret. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm available yeah. right now, but yeah, let me know if I can make it. I'll be there. And at any time during the uh, during it, uh, the you know the 12 days we have currently, you know anybody's able, able to come in and see how things are going. Would be happy to have you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think it's important. Again, we have pretty good understanding and knowledge of how these systems work, and making sure we're again we're all singing on from the same hymnal, and you know we have voter confidence in this process. Absolutely, sounds good. But all right, than, is there anything else? Okay. Other than that, all right. that's that's all I had. Yep. That's the news. That Michael. Fits the trend. Okay. Michael. Yes. Um, I think it would probably be good because all of the stuff at the BJC has been referred to as early voting. Exactly how that process works. Sure, sure, and 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 we that was initially how we were referring to it, but we have not been referring to it anymore, and we've been referring to it as the satellite elections office at the Bryce Jordan Center. Um, and so, yeah, we, we have moved away from any mention of early voting. Um, now, people in the community, I think, are going to refer to it as such, but we can't control that. Uh, but, yeah, we, we are not referring to it as um, early voting. This is over-the-counter mail-in ballot application. Yeah, and, and again, to, to just go to for, and, and for the record, Michael, this this, yeah. is, this is all this satellite office does. However, they can still come to the Willowbank building if they'd like to do it there as well. So no, so yeah, that's a, that's a good point as well. So we we uh, we have uh, we are, we have essentially said that this would be the only site that would be able to do that. We would not be doing it at the Willowbank building uh, due to the difficulty with social distancing, the difficulty with physical distancing. If anybody would like to come to the Willowbank building to drop off a form, 
they can do that at our front desk, but we would not, and that would be something that they'd be giving to the front worker at the main entrance, but we would not be going back and getting a ballot and all that. Just from the just from the logistics of the office, I, 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 I wouldn't support it. It would just be very difficult. However, we will have every form that anybody would need for voter registration, anything like that, we would have that at the satellite election office, but we would just, we would explain to them, we can't process it here, we can provide it to you, you can mail it, you can go online to, find, to finish it, you can drop it off at the main entrance of the Willowbank building. But in terms of, of the services we're providing, it's simply the processing of the application and giving them a vote packet. Um, so that's, that's how we're looking at doing it. I'm glad you clarified that because I was under the impression we were going to be doing it at both locations. So no, I completely understand with uh, COVID and all. That's the challenge. Yeah, absolutely. If it wasn't for COVID, I think we we could do it at both, but it's just it, I think it's too much of a challenge. Understood. Okay. Anything else to come before the board today before we adjourn? I I think Marley might have a question. I don't know if she's still uh, yeah. on. This is Marley. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I lied. I have more than just one question. Um, but my first question, we've talked a lot um, over the summer with the June primary and leading up to the November election about poll workers and volunteering on election day. Um, just to explain what do poll workers do in leading up to election day? What sort of training do they have? Um, I'm sure everyone's been made aware of ballots that were found in the trash. Um, and Secretary Bukvar explained yesterday that that was a volunteer who was not trained properly and didn't know what to do with those ballots. So what is Center County doing to ensure that its poll workers and people who are giving up their time on November 3rd and everything else leading up and after the election to make sure that they are prepared because technology can work, but there's also human error. And if you human, human doesn't know what they're doing, who knows what's to happen? So what are you all doing to avoid anything like that happening? Uh, I guess I guess the question would be, uh, Jody, would you like to uh, tackle that one or? or sure, Michael? no, I can. <clears throat> what do poll workers do at every location? We have a judge of elections, inspectors of elections, and clerk. The judge of elections is the person that's ultimately responsible for the poll worker, or yeah, for the poll workers assigning the positions, making sure that the polls are opened, ready to go, you know, at the appropriate times, and that the process is working smoothly. One of the inspectors will have the poll book. What that individual is doing excuse me, is when a voter presents themselves, they will provide their name. That poll worker will look up the individual, verify that it, you know, it is them. If there's any information that that voter needs to supply, if they're a first time voter, um, that would be noted in the poll book. That's what that individual does. <clears throat> has the voter sign the poll book. After that process, there is a clerk and an inspector. Those two people are doing the same exact job. They are writing a voter's name into a list that's called the numbered list of voters booklet. They are duplicating that because at the end of the night, one goes home with an inspector of elections, one comes back to our office to use during official count. Another individual then is passing out the ballot. They're the judge of elections. Also, if there would be any problems when the voter is putting their ballot into um, the ballot box, they're around should the voter have any questions um, regarding, you know, if an error message. And by that, I mean, if a voter has colored in too many ovals on their ballot, so they voted for more than the number they were permitted to do, it will give them a message, hey, did you really mean to do this? And it gives them an opportunity to either kick that ballot back and fix their error or to just cast their ballot. So the judge of elections is always around to answer those questions 
as well. So that is what a pool worker does. We do provide training prior to every election that we have. Um, we do have a manual that essentially goes over every single thing a pool worker does, what procedures they have to do, and in the order in which they need to be done. Also in that manual are frequently asked questions that the judge of elections you know, can look at prior to, during, um, or also our numbers are on it, so they have a direct number to our office that's not available to the public so that they can call us with any questions that they have at any point in time. Now, you also stated, well, yeah, the poll workers. We do an extensive training. Also, leading up to that, they do get a copy of the poll workers manual. So as they're going through that, if they have any questions prior to election day, they can call us. Um, if they want some hands-on with the equipment, practicing to put it, you know, put it together, open up the polls, close the polls. I do schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments for them to come in and be able to do that with a demo unit. Also on election day, there are three copies provided to the poll workers of those manuals as well. Now, you also mentioned about the temporary workers and ballots going into um, the garbage can. Um, fortunately, we have not had that experience yet. We <laughs> do have thorough training um, in this office with our temporary people. So those that are doing the mail, for the first several days or when anyone new comes in to help us with that process, one of the normal, everyday, full-time county election employees is with them, explaining to them what this is and where it needs to go. So if this envelope says this, looks like this, or looks like that, time stamp it, and it goes here. So we do go over and spend time with our temporary employees on how each piece of mail is handled. And in addition to that, our, our office is very small. So the people actually opening and dealing with the mail are not that far from any of the full-time staff. So if there is any questions, we're very close and are able to kind of oversee as well as the instructions that are given that Jody mentioned. Thank you. And there's also been a lot of conversation and talk about poll watchers over the past few weeks. So you've explained what a poll worker does. What is a poll watcher? How do you become one? And where are they allowed to be on election day? The poll watchers, they become a poll watcher. Either a candidate has to submit a request form or the party chair's request um, a submit a form requesting a list of people to be eligible to be poll watchers. So once we receive that form from either the candidates or the parties, we do confirm, confirm that they are registered voters, which they must be. And then <clears throat> this, there's a seal, there's a process, like a form that needs to be completed, and then that goes back either to the candidate or to the party chairs to disperse amongst those watchers. The watchers are permitted to be in a polling location while the poll workers are opening the polls throughout election day and then also when the polls are closing. What the watchers do essentially um, is make sure that the procedures that should be taking place are taking place and that things are not done inappropriately or voters are being turned away, you know, away for whatever reason. Ultimately, what they also have is a list of registered voters that are in that particular precinct. So as voters are coming in, providing their names to the individual that has the poll book. The poll book inspector will also announce that voter's name. 
So as that name is being announced, those watchers are kind of scratching those names off the list. So that way, periodically throughout the day, they contact the candidate, they contact the party chairs, you know, this is the list of people that have turned out, phone calls start getting made, reminding people, hey, today's election day, such and such candidate is looking for your support, you know, those kinds of things. If there are any issues that the watcher feels is not properly being done by the poll workers or certain rules are not being followed, they will either contact our office or they will let the candidate or the party chairs that they're on behalf of know. And then our office will be contacted to let us know, hey, this is what we're witnessing. Is this how it's supposed to work? So that way, if something is going on that should not be going on, we can get a hold of the judge of elections, let them know, hey, we've been um, informed that this is occurring. That's not how it needs to be done. This is the acceptable way to correct it and go about it. So that essentially, in a nutshell, is what the poll watchers do. As for their types of training, we are not involved with. All of that would come either from the party chairs or the candidates. Thank you. And then, thing, just so you understand, also that uh, there is a presiding judge. One of the uh, common pleas judges is assigned to uh, monitor the election. So, if there are challenges or questions or emergency situations that uh, that evolve, uh, they are there and available to uh, to address those issues. Thank you. And just finally, pivoting from election security and focusing on health and safety, our poll workers, watchers, voters, and anyone who is in a precinct on election day expected to wear a mask and abide by health and safety guidelines? I would certainly, I, I would certainly recommend it. I don't know that we can uh, turn somebody away because they're not, but certainly all the, the folks that, uh, that are working the polls and the folks that are uh, there to participate in the electoral process would appreciate, I'm sure, uh, you know, that consideration. Is Center County requiring its poll workers to abide by these health and safety procedures, or are they just expecting and appreciating them to do so? Well, uh, again, unless somebody has some very viable uh, reason not to, uh, not, not to do so, I think we would expect all our uh, election workers to uh, participate in, uh, in in all the safety uh, protocol. But it's not a requirement? Unless there's a health issue, I would say that it is, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the press or any uh, any other issues to come before the board uh, this morning? None for me. All right, um, um, hearing none, we have a motion to adjourn. I will, I will make the motion to adjourn. I will second. Okay, properly moved to second. Any other additions or, or yeah, any other uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, we'll talk to you very soon.